How do we test starters? Very good question. Why would we want to test a starter? Why might we need to test a starter? Well, we may have bought a starter on eBay or we may have been to a local car boot sale and we've just happened to have found a starter there suitable for a gardener engine and we want to test it before we go to the bother of fitting on an engine. Fitting it on an engine is bothersome enough because you have to take off the strap and uh, or certainly have to loosen the strap and you have to do all sorts of connections and things so it's really handy if we can test them on the bench here how do we do that i think i've shown you in previous videos where we simply short the plus terminal to this little anal uh, little um, solenoid terminal here uh, <clears throat> now i'll confess i'm not using batteries to do this i'm using a power supply and unfortunately it's a bit noisy so you're going to have to bear with me here uh, it just doesn't suit me to use batteries at the minute so i'm going to illustrate that for you put on my power supply starter appears to be fine but how do we know that it's going to work on their load we could go to all the bother of fitting it on a starter, fitting it, sorry, fitting it on an engine, and it doesn't actually turn the engine over. It just hasn't got the, the torque. Well, I'm going to show you a very crude and brutal method of testing the starter, uh, which we use a lot, and it's quite effective. We use a piece of wood, a piece of scrap wood. We position the wood in there like so on the bench get it up near the pinion switch on the power supply I think I might try selling this starter to a local sawmill I don't see very much wrong with it it's pretty good but we will find from time to time we test the starter like this that, that pin is actually actually hot now um, that we test the starter like this and what will happen is the clutches inside will slip and we know then that that starter is is a dud and has to be sent off for restoration now of course there has to be formal methods proper methods of testing these starters um, one thing that we can do is we could make up a special lever and <clears throat> somehow get it on there onto that spline bring the lever out here and hang a weight off it and we can certainly test the clutches inside doing that um, we can add weights on until the clutches start to slip and then we know what health what health they're in um, we're talking about a normal uh, starting torque of about 100 to 104 newton meters to start your typical diesel engine a petrol engine is much easier started but the compression ratios on a diesel engine is higher so we need more torque a, a diesel engine will typically start at somewhere between 90 and 180 rpm gardeners of course as i've pointed in other videos are typically very easy to start if they don't start easily then generally speaking they're not getting fuel or they're not been turned over quick enough. Turnover should be about between 90 and 180 RPM. Okay, now that I've got you here, I will just discuss a few more interesting points about these starters. They're series wound. What that means is that the field winding is here and the armature in here, the arm of the chair that's on the rotor, the windings are inside here, are joined together, they're in series. So what that means is, <clears throat> whenever you push the button, you're essentially presenting more or less a short circuit to the batteries. So you're getting massive currents flowing there, typically hundreds of, hundreds of amps, maybe 200, 400 amps, something like that. Which means that they've got very high starting torque. So they'll turn the engine over at low speed, get it going, and that's the way they'll start at low RPM. And that is essential. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out to you is that 
You might think that these two nuts at the front here are tight against the pinion. They're not. If I hold that nut, I can turn the pinion independent of the central shaft. This is really quite important. The pinion itself, this is one here, you'll see it's quite worn. But you'll see that it's got this uh, helical drive on it here. What that means is that if by any chance the engine happens to backfire, it can't turn the, the pinion back opposite itself because of that helix there. The clutches inside will also protect the starter and the pinion teeth from being overloaded and stripping the, the teeth off. Uh, that pinion that I showed you uh, is a brass one and they are ideal because the wear, well first of all brass is very easy, uh, is very uh, reluctant to wear, it's really an amazing uh, material brass. But it means that anywhere that does take place, takes place on the pinion and not on the starter ring. If you wear your starter ring, then you've got a, you're faced with a much bigger problem. This is a steel pinion, um, becoming more popular because the simple reason that the brass ones are harder to get and they're more expensive. The steel pinion works every bit as well, but you need to make damn sure that it's engaging properly and not, and not rattling or not out of alignment in any way. <clears throat> I've also heard of people putting a torque spanner on here and testing the clutches in that way. I wouldn't be terribly happy about that because these nuts are not designed for taking high torque. The starter itself, yes, and the clutches, yes, but those nuts at the front, no, I, I wouldn't be too happy doing that. The starters that we've looked at uh, so far have been CAV starters, the same people that make the injection pumps. But this is a Sims starter. You notice it has a different nose on it. And it also has a, a bulbous part sticking out the back here. Essentially it works the same way. Ex still excellent starters, very good, very reliable, very simple. Works essentially the same way. They're called axial starters because the whole rotor moves forward, as I explained before. And that's where they get the name from. They're axial. They move along that axis there. So we power this up and you'll see it works just the same way as the CAV. Now, you'll notice that this one's 12 volts and uh, I have a few of these 12 volt starters. 12 volt starters and 12 volt alternators are getting difficult to find. Um, most lorries were, and trucks were Gardener for being used were generally speaking 24 volts. So 24 volt is much easier to get. There's maybe a few more of the Sims type in 12 volts, nothing about. The pinion, this is a, a 12 tooth pinion. And generally speaking, the 12 tooth pinion is associated with the five inch SL5 starter. The six inch starter uses a 13 tooth pinion. Don't ask me why. Uh, the flywheel is the same, the ring gear pitch is the same, um, but they use different teeth on the pinions. At the end of the day, really these starters are, they're not easy worked at in the workshop. It's not something to be treated lightly because you can very easily destroy a starter uh, by making a simple mistake. My approach, generally speaking, is if they're giving any trouble at all, ship them off and get them restored by professional people. Thank you so much for watching.